Greetings, my brothers hello, and sisters. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 111. We're still in season four, thank God. We, yes. We just give him the praise, honor, and the glory for blessing us to come before you yes, on this yes. beautiful March afternoon on Saturday. It's just yeah. getting a little warmer here in Georgia, okay. but we can use it depending on what we had in the past few weeks when it came to the freeze warnings. Right. But we're going to have our last uh, Saturday episode in this month of March. And mm -hmm. we're still focusing on life. We've been focusing on life for the past uh, few Saturdays, actually. Right. And we've been talking about the influential African-American women who changed the course of American history. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a little wrapping up this week on influential uh, African American women, and last week we talked about Toni Morrison uh, in the area of Black literature, right? Uh, with her award-winning book and movie mm. Beloved, yeah, beloved, and we yeah. talked about uh, Tarana Burke, right? Uh, about her fight for gender equality with the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna wrap it up today. We're gonna wrap it up, and we're talking about a woman who's a civil rights icon by the name of Miss Virginia, yeah. or we like to call her Virginia uh, Walden Ford, right? who was one of America's leading advocates for parent empowerment. And as a renowned, fearless mother, grandmother, uh, producer, author, movie producer, Virginia has spent, I say her entire, entire life fighting to create new education opportunities for underprivileged children and families. Yes. I tell you, you guys stay tuned for this one. She is a powerful woman that's still out and about today, mm -hmm. making things happen and bringing about change. But before we get started, we want to definitely give a shout out to our fellow podcasters here on BS3 Network. Mm -hmm. Um, quite a few of us that are really making this thing happen on BS3 Network. Mm -hmm. And we certainly want to give uh, honor and acknowledge our leader, Ben Sutter III, who is constantly, constantly working to bring uh, better to this right. network. Right. So right. he is the visionary. He is the one in the driver's seat. Don't <laughs> get it twisted. He, he's doing this thing right. and right, right. working tirelessly, if my, I might add, mm -hmm. uh, producing the spirit of excellence all across the board on this network. Right, um, right. And if you're interested, he offers coaching and we would like for you to reach out to him uh, he is definitely available to get you started in this podcasting arena. If oh, you yeah. are interested, um, there's information on the screen for you to uh, take advantage of that, as well as uh, our Roku link mm -hmm. for BS3 Network. That's on your screen. There will be something for everyone in your family. Believe me, uh, probably <laughs> more uh, right. for some than others. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, check us out. Download that on your devices. And also, if you'd like to reach out to us at Sons of Us Podcast, that's our information on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but please. until uh, next time, we'd like to just share with you a little bit more about BS3 Network, and we'll be right back with today's show. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV.
So born in 1951 as Virginia Fowler, the real Miss Virginia, <laughs> grew up in the thick of the intense civil rights desegregation of Little Rock mm. Central High School. A native of Little Rock, Arkansas, and daughter of two public school educators, mm -hmm. Virginia, her twin sister, Harrietta. Now, Harrietta, who was named after her father's middle name, which is Harry, <laughs> and Virginia, who's named after her mother's middle name, which is obviously Virginia, were the first of 130 students chosen to desegregate Little Rock's high school in the mid-1960s. Mm -hmm. Their father, William Harry Fowler, mm -hmm. was the first Black assistant superintendent in the Little Rock School District. Mm -hmm. He has the best story in the world, Virginia says, <laughs> with obvious affection for her father, who was the child of a train attendant and lady who cleaned houses for a living. Mm -hmm. Neither of her grandparents had more than a third grade education, but they were smart. And they had a smart son who was also very intelligent. Virginia says her father was brilliant. Mm. William Harry Fowler excelled in everything he did. Now he grew up in a small town, Marion, North Carolina, <laughs> which is only about 43 miles from my hometown, Hickory, North Carolina. Yeah. But that particular town only had Eighth, eighth grade education for black kids, only up to the eighth grade wow. for black kids. Hmm. Now, which was also a reason, and we found this out, a lot of the students or kids in the surrounding county of Catawba County, which is our hometown county, mm -hmm. a lot of these students in that surrounding county, they all came to attend a historical all black high school called Ridgeview High School, right. which was in our hometown of Hickory, North Carolina. And y'all will probably remember that. We talked about it before. They produced the Untouchables, mm -hmm. which is the only undefeated, unscored on football team in history during the 1963 and 1964 season. Right. But the Fowlers, even though they were only about 43 miles, uh, I would say, northwest of Hickory, North Carolina, the Flowers heard about Stillman Institute in Alabama. Mm. The Institute, which later became Stillman or Stillman College, right? historical black college that had a junior and senior high school within the institution of Stillman Institution. Mm. So Virginia's grandparents, they put all their money together <laughs> and they sent her father, wow. the 13-year-old son at the time, all the way to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And he wow. talked Stillman Institute into letting him be a janitor and go to high school hmm. at 13 years old now. And he worked his way through Stillman. He went to junior college and then he went wow. to the military. So he was in the military station in Arkansas when he decided to attend Philander Smith, where he met Virginia's mom. Now, Philander. Smith College is a historical black college in Little Rock. Mm. Virginia mother, Marion Virginia Johnson, who later became Fowler, mm. was the daughter of a bricklayer and lady who was a seamstress who sold for many white people in a Little Rock, Arkansas area. Now she graduated from Philander Smith at the age of 16 and became a public school teacher. Mm -hmm. So it must have taken courage for Mr. Fowler to encourage Virginia and Harrietta to go to Central, where Fowler became the assistant superintendent for personnel for Little Rock, Arkansas School District. Wow, perseverance. Yes, wow. yes. But Virginia, because of this error, mm -hmm. she recalled that the Ku Klux Klan burned a cross in her yard. I was crying. Mm -hmm. I was terrified, Virginia said. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody also threw a rock through their window that almost hit their six-month-old sister. Oh, so God. finally, Miss, Mr. Fowler, her father, got his rifle. He said he had enough. I know that's Went right. outside to confront the Ku Klux Klan, but fortunately, the Klansmen had left. But William Harry Fowler belonged to the NCAA, I'm sorry, NAACP. <laughs> that has been a disappointment unfortunately for Virginia. 
because the organization opposed school choice. I'm talking mm. about the NAACP. Wow. I'm thinking about NCAA because of March Madness. So y'all, 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 y'all forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> March Madness has gone through my brain because my my uh, bracket was busted. But anyway, let me get back to the subject. I regress. It was hard for Virginia when she <laughs> says, I don't know how I did it. Mm. But I looked at the children around me and my siblings, and I knew this just something I had to do. But she said she was blessed because her parents taught them to be hard workers and and not to fall under the weight of life hardships. Mm -hmm. She said, we learn not to accept defeat and not to make defeat a part of our lives. So Walden Ford's parents also giving her something else, a firm belief in the power of education. Mm -hmm. In a way, her school choice fight has its roots, not only in Washington, D.C., but also in a racially troubled Little Rock, Arkansas, mm. where Virginia and her beloved identical twin sister, Harrietta, grew up. She said, I was bitter. I was bitter for a while. She said, Mitz, but, but I want you to understand why I'm not bitter today. She said, our parents were Christians and they would not permit us to hate people. Mm. They said there were yeah. good and bad people in all races. Mm-hmm. She went back to her 50th reunion at Central High School. And she said, I realized during the banquet that I needed to let go of that lingering bitterness. And people had changed. Whatever was going on when I was mm-hmm. in high school had changed with <laughs> many classmates had changed too. Which brings me to my first scripture, which is Colossians 3, 12 through 13. It says, put on, therefore, as the elite of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, Mm. kindness, humbleness of the mind, meekness, long suffering, Mm. forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And, you know, we also noticed a change in our white Hickory High School classmate when we attended our 40th reunion in 2017. We were two of only four Blacks out of approximately 100 students who attended this reunion at this plush white country club. (laughs) So we probably had about 300 total in our class, and about 15% of them were Black. But at this reunion, the 40th reunion, Mm. there was a total of four of us. And we were two out of the four (laughs) out of approximately 100 of our classmates. And one is on right now. But we noticed that one is on right now, Robert Davis. Thank you for that great history lesson you guys uh, give us every week. I do not get to tune in. Thank you for tuning in this day, this Saturday. thank you. Thank you, but it's good. I could always go back and catch up. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. That's one of my classmates. That was one of the four (laughs) that was there at that 40th high school reunion. But what happened was, see, they closed, but it was was a cordial reunion, and they was very friendly to us, and we we, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But see, they closed historical black, Review High School right. in 1966 after being open for 40 years, open up in 1926. Mm. And they desegregated Hickory High School. And we graduated in the class of 1977. Yeah. But there was riots in the early 70s mm-hmm. at our high school, but but we got along with pretty much pretty well with our classmates. You want to say something about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's interesting how we went back Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the other one was, probably like our 20th. I think right. it was our 20th. 20th. Right, right. And it was a different crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of things going on that were, you know, we were beyond all of the, the drinking and the right, all right. of that. Uh, but still, this 40th mm-hmm. was something special to right. me. 
I mean, I think they received us a little bit more and, and mm-hmm. people realized, Benji and Irene, like y'all still <laughs> together. So that that made me feel kind of good. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, they just kept saying, y'all ain't changed. And I wanted mm-hmm. to say to them, but y'all have, <laughs> you know, but black don't crack, baby. You, you know, it seems like God just just stretches our skin and make mm-hmm. it even tighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, you know, I can say I appreciate it. a lot of them became my friends on Facebook, right, of right, course. Right. Uh, some of them until they started making some of those comments that we didn't like. Um, and one of them, really, I remember that he said, you you unfriended me. <laughs> Child, please. We, we don't have time for some of them comments. Right. Not on my page, not right. on our page. We right. share a page. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what marriage does. We share our Facebook page in case mm-hmm. you didn't know. But yeah, it was a good it was a good gathering. Mm-hmm. I, I really did enjoy, mm-hmm. you know, the time that we spent. We toured the high school right, and right, right. you know, it was just memories. It really right. was. But right. I'm glad we represented. <laughs> it could have been more of us and classmate Robert Davis and the Maddox, mm-hmm. you know. They were there. They were there. They were there. They were there. We represented. Right, right, right. <laughs> so getting back to Little Rock. Mm-hmm. So we gave you a little brief history on our experience, but right. desegregation came to Little Rock Public School mm-hmm. in 1957 right. when the nine black children known as the Little Rock Nine, Little Rock nine. was ushered into Central High School by members of the Arkansas National Guard mm. amid spitting and mm. mob protesting and yelling the N-word and, and cursing these children out. In the midst of the 60s, the process of integration was far from complete. And Virginia and Harrietta, her twin sister, was part of the second wave of black kids going to predominantly white schools. They went to Central in the 10th grade. There were several thousand students of whom few than a 200 were black. And Virginia, she did not want to go to Central. Hmm. But her dad dropping her off the first day her father gave her a pep talk. Hmm. He said to her, you have to be responsible and go to Central and do well because you have younger siblings that are watching you. Looking up to you. And if you don't do well, you won't help change the way they look at us. Hmm. She was 14 and she felt she had to do it for her siblings. Wow. Also considering what her father did at Steelman Institute at the age of 13 years old. Mm. So she went to Central High School. Mm-hmm. She called, she was said she was called the N-word every of day. Mm. Every day. Teachers were not nice to her or her sister. But you know what? She got a good education. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, however, she opted to go to an all-black college of Hampton University oh. in Hampton, Virginia. Virginia married her college sweetheart. Unfortunately, the marriage ended in divorce. With a name like Virginia, you know, she was destined to go to a HBCU in <laughs> Virginia, <laughs> right? Right? So, it's bringing me to my next scripture, which is Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Mm-hmm. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Yeah. Well, this is right. This is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, which promises that it will be well with thee, mm-hmm. and thou mayest live long on the earth. Mm-hmm. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, That's right. but bring That's them right. up in the nurture and the admiration of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You have something to say about the, anything going on with the family or the children? I know. The family. Uh, encouraging our children. Oh, no, I'll say it. I'll, I'll say, say it later. later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So we're, we're going to talk about now her career. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was uh, involved in finance. Mm-hmm. You know, if you watch the movie, I didn't I didn't catch that part. Maybe I missed it. But um, in, in finance and accounting. Mm-hmm. So, you know what? It takes a lot of brain power to deal with numbers. So mm-hmm. my hat's off to her for that. And she worked for a sister cities. I've heard of that mm-hmm. a lot working at the port of Oakland. Right. And you deal with all of these sister cities, mm-hmm. um, but it promotes the relationship between cities in different countries. Mm-hmm. So that kind of brought back a little memory for me, but Virginia Walden Ford, mm-hmm. a powerful advocate 
empowering families, right. you know, to, to go forward with these educational opportunities for mm -hmm. their children. So mm -hmm. we appreciate all of her achievements. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go through some of these, but you got to think about the drive that her right. parents had. Right. That kind of created that deep passion mm -hmm. for the education, mm -hmm. uh, educational opportunities that she was pursuing. Right. So as an education advocate and author, um, she has paved the way mm -hmm. and destroyed barriers right. and obstacles. I'm right. not going to say right. she jumped over. She destroyed them <laughs> obstacles That's it. That's and it. the barriers and has inspired families, right. you right. know, right. to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I love. I love about that. And so some of these obstacles, now that we're talking about them, mm -hmm. they were everywhere. Right. Uh, but I believe Miss Virginia inherited her love for that education, like I said, from mm -hmm. her parents. They right. were public school mm -hmm. educators. Right. The daddy became the superintendent. Mm -hmm. They right. were all about making sure their kids mm -hmm. got what they needed. Mm -hmm. So the first educational hurdle I feel she um, overcame, like, you said earlier right. about her and her twin sister right. um, to be a part of 130 may not seem mm -hmm. like it's a lot of, of students that desegregated, but right. uh, they a made lot. them feel so small right. uh, that in fact, it was a lot mm -hmm. um, or at least they tried to, but you know, she watched the passion her, her parents fought right. through that educational maze. Mm -hmm. And she took on, in my opinion, she took on that same mentality, right. that same tenacity. Right. And right. that's what I love about her. Mm -hmm. And so this scripture brings to mind uh, the, uh, the thought that um, in uh, 2 Timothy mm -hmm. 1 and 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Right but a power mm -hmm. of love and a sound mind. And right, that's, right. that's exactly what she has mm -hmm. displayed. She said, I'm not scared. Right. You know, I'm right. going to go forth, do what I need to do mm -hmm. for my problem child. The, right, the right. one child, her baby boy that mm -hmm. gave her the blues. Mm -hmm. um, and she said this, and it's, it's interesting because this might be true. But she said he was one of those kids mm -hmm. God gives you. Mm -hmm. So you'll find out. If you really have what it takes to be a parent, That's it. <laughs> I'm like, child, <laughs> no, she didn't say that. Yeah, God, give, yeah. he'll give you one too. That's right. And if you think about it, you, you know, you got, you got one. one. You got one. That's right. You got one. <laughs> so although Miss Virginia always watched nervously in the movie, I could just see her. She dropped her son off mm -hmm. and she sit there and watched him go inside. Mm -hmm. Or at least she thought he went inside. Right. right, uh, right. And she would drive off. When in fact he would go and hit the streets, right. the mean streets in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. I I don't even know what this little boy was getting into, but mm -hmm. I know the streets in D.C. are no That's different it. from That's any right. major That's city, right. That's right. and for some reason that just attracted him. Mm -hmm. So uh, she says, by the time he was eleven, things mm -hmm. had really gotten bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty young. Yeah, that's pretty young. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you see a picture of her in a little bit, you'll see he, all them gray hairs on her head <laughs> <laughs> from this boy right, right here. Right, right. But her comment is right up the street from us was a very crime written area. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't stay away from that area. Mm -hmm. And she says, I was constantly having to go get mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. The drug dealers would give mm -hmm. kids expensive gifts right. in return, delivering drugs wrapped in a newspaper. That's it. That's it. That yeah, those are their runners, the runners that's you know, it. because they're so doing. coward, they get right. these children to do it for them. Right. Right. So William eventually got suspended. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, Virginia was at her wits end. She sat on her porch. She was crying and a neighbor by the name of Robert Lewis. Right. He was a man that even though he had left, mm -hmm. he returned to the neighborhood trying to make a difference. And he asked her, you know, what's right. wrong? That's Why right. are you crying? Mm -hmm. And so she just said, you know, she's got this, this son that's right. really troubled and she really needs somebody to help. Mm -hmm. And so thank God for Robert Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, this, this gentleman actually gave her uh, some, a scholarship. Okay. And she said, I right, look, I'm not prideful. I'll accept this. Mm -hmm. If this is going to be, you know, a life changing opportunity right. for my right. son, right. definitely. Now, the scholarship wasn't enough, you know, and sometimes that's the case. So 
she ended up, it paid for half. So she yeah, ended yeah. up had to go and get another job. Wow. And, you know, very common. Parents mm-hmm. will do whatever it takes yeah, for the betterment of their children. That's it. That's Even that's if it. it means burning the midnight oil. So mm-hmm. that's what she did. Accounting during the day. And then she also did accounting at a second job. And I love the name of this, this station. Believe in a dream records. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. She uh, she was connected to some mm-hmm. positive stuff. Mm-hmm. So she would get home. Her first job at seven o'clock, feed her children. She had right. three of them mm-hmm. and then go to work from nine to midnight. Mm-hmm. Sister was doing it for mm-hmm. the sake of her children. And mm-hmm. William got enrolled mm-hmm. in this Archbishop Carroll mm-hmm. High School, mm-hmm. which was also Robert Lewis's alma mater. Okay. So you can understand why he, you know, trying to Mm -hmm. make it better. He got a better opportunity. So I love that he gave back. So Mm -hmm. she noticed a big change in her son. Okay. Uh, Okay. I loved when he walked into the class and the teacher, Mm -hmm. a black gentleman was, was teaching about science and about Mm -hmm. how things grow. And he just really gravitated and began to really blossom. So they gave a, a really good depiction of him in the movie of how, you know, he, he um, began to gravitate towards the positive things of the school. Okay. And okay. Um, they, she pointed out they didn't have metal detectors, right, which right. who knows, maybe they had them in the black school. I mm-hmm. don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the kids were engaged right. and they right. were smiling. <laughs> and that just warmed her heart. Oh, she said man. she saw a sudden change in her son. Wow. And so as a result, mm-hmm. you know, here she goes giving back. Uh, we're going to talk about this um, this particular program that she, sorry, mm-hmm. this program that she brought forth. Uh, anyway, we're mm-hmm. going to take that down. <laughs> it's called the DC Opportunity Scholarship Program. Okay. And, you know, while she was raising her three children in Washington, DC, mm-hmm. Virginia was just shocked that so many children were forced, forced. Mm. That is that's tough. Forced mm-hmm. to attend mm-hmm. failing schools where their you know grades and test scores were just horrible. Right, right. And right. they lived in, as they say, the wrong zip code. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you could not go to any of the better schools. Right, right. Uh, but in fact, she was you know really concerned about her own son, who she felt was falling through the cracks. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm going to just reflect on that zip code thing Mm -hmm. was widespread. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember in California, there were friends, there were family members, there were single mothers that literally use other people's zip code to to get their children in a better school. Mm -hmm. Um, And in recent years, believe it or not, parents were being arrested for that. Mm -hmm. I remember she might still be serving time. You know, for doing that. But what's wrong with making sure your child gets the best education possible? You know, again, one of those one of those, you know, little tactics to make sure that we don't get what's available to us. Now, California, I must say, was a more lenient state Mm -hmm. and they allowed us to complete an inner district uh, form. I'll never forget that. And and that allowed us to, you know justify why we wanted our children in a better mm-hmm. school that's it mm-hmm. and so uh and even to the fact that on your way to work mm-hmm. you know if that is on your route right. then your child could go to any of those schools now we right. were actually 15 miles away from home mm-hmm. and uh, i took the kids during that time period mm-hmm. uh to school and it was on my way to work and that's how i justified it and right. they got right. to stay in the school that they were mm-hmm. in that's it when we move 15 miles away. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. it was kind of tough. It was a challenge. Well, we mm-hmm. made, right. we made it through, get home late, <laughs> right, you know, right, right. dealing with traffic. But anyway, it was worth it mm-hmm. for our children to be able to get the education that they needed. Right. That's so, important. you know, it was, it was dealing with William's problems that showed Miss mm-hmm. Virginia. Right. Also what it took to become one of the most effective Mm -hmm. leaders of this school choice movement. Right, right. right. And she was a show enough leader leading the way. So in 1998, Mm -hmm. she took action forming this grassroots organization, DC Parents Mm -hmm. for School Choice, Mm -hmm. along Mm -hmm. with a group of other dedicated parents. Right, right. 
right. you know, that really did what it what needed to be done. And, you know, I'm borrowing this warriors, this phrase, <laughs> there's strength in numbers. Right. And so with every hurdle, every obstacle mm -hmm. and every oppression, I'm sure Miss Virginia knew that God will give her beauty for ashes, That's it. That's the it. oil of joy for mourning, because mm -hmm. I'm sure she shed many tears, uh -huh. and a garment of praise for all of the <laughs> victories That's it. That's uh, it. for her spirit of heaviness, because right. I know right. that was not easy. Mm -hmm. And that she might, you know, be called a, a tree of righteousness, because mm -hmm. she was standing tall, right. that right. the Lord had planted her to do what needed to be done, mm -hmm. and he got the praise. He That's was it. glorified. That's it. That's and it. so she was also the founding member of the Black Alliance for Educational Option Incorporated. Okay. But okay. I can say, without Virginia being at the forefront, there might not be a D.C. Opportunity Scholarship Program mm -hmm. that you know gave the scholarships to K through 12, right, right. you know, students from low income families mm -hmm. to attend private and parochial um, schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I'm so happy that she, even though the politicians uh, threatened the program and, you know, she and her army were an essential part of this campaign to get uh, the scholarships um, mm -hmm. signed into law mm -hmm. and they worked tirelessly right, going right. door to door and neighborhood to neighborhood and mm -hmm. all of those drug infested areas recruiting and training thousands of other parents oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. stand up for their children's future. Right, right, so, right. you know, the politicians literally tried to block it. Mm -hmm. uh, but in 2003, with the support of national education uh, organizations and lawmakers, Miss Virginia and her courageous group Mm -hmm. of parent advocates succeeded in convincing Congress and then president, I right. call him Curious George, <laughs> George W. Bush right, right. to enact the nation's first ever opportunity scholarship program. Mm -hmm. And so this program, as I said, it provides scholarships for low income children to attend, yes, private schools. Right. Right. while boosting federal funding for traditional public schools and public charter schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in an interview, I love these interviews that I read about, and some of these quotes are just awesome. Mm -hmm. But she told parents, you stay focused on what you want for your child. That's it. That's Don't it. lose focus on the voices you hear mm -hmm. on either side of your head. <laughs> you stay focused on mm -hmm. the children and mm -hmm. we will win. The fact of the matter is that the only reason, like I said, there is one is because of these courageous parents mm -hmm. that really, look, they had no problem in standing up and That's saying right. what needed to be said on behalf of the children. The children can't speak up for themselves. And so, you know, this particular, um, approval there mm -hmm. was one democrat vote mm -hmm. and she actually went up to him and said i know this was hard for you to do wow. i just want to thank you mm -hmm. and he said literally he went against his party and everyone else and sometimes you just have to do was what's right, right. That's it. now i'm sorry y'all but if only that would be the case today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our country would not be in the situation that's, we're in now with it. this 45 still <laughs> mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would just be a much better place yeah. if the politicians would just do, do the right. right thing. Do what's right. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. But they're living with this conscience day in and day out because right. of the craziness right. that's going on. Right. But Miss Virginia said that she has a lot of respect for that person. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I wish she would have named him. Mm -hmm. I do too. <laughs> Uh, Democrat, of course, but right, right. nevertheless, yeah. he, did he did what, what was, was right. right. Mm -hmm. And so after the program's passage, Miss Virginia worked to encourage families to learn mm -hmm. more about their school choice. Right, right. And then, you know, conducting uh, information sessions mm -hmm. across the country. And mm -hmm. later she played a role in the congressional reauthorization wow. of the program. Wow. So I know you had more to say. I probably went uh, overboard. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's um, okay. Now, I just wanted to talk about, you know, what we have experienced. Mm -hmm. You know, our grandchildren attended or attend mm -hmm. a state-funded charter school here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Because our daughter, who's an educator, knows the education received in not all, but some public schools 
can be of lesser quality. Yes. Especially if you have a child with some challenges. Right. Now, we know every African-American child can have problems adjusting mm -hmm. to a predominantly white public school, mm -hmm. especially growing up in the 60s. You know, it helped us to appreciate right, and right. value an education from an all-Black institution, realizing that segregation had its benefits. Mm -hmm. I know we marched and, and we fought for integration mm -hmm. because we had lesser quality books and and our facilities were of lesser quality that needed repair or, or had damaged um, infrastructure. We understand all of that. Yeah. But we also understand that we didn't receive the same opportunities, mm -mm. support, or encouragement from the integrated white middle schools and high school teachers that we attended. And one of my homeboys, you know, he always complained about <laughs> we got bad education, and we didn't get the right opportunity when it came to scholarships, when it came to athletics, because once we went to that predominantly white high school, everybody didn't get the same chance to be achieving the goal that they felt they could achieve. Then in turn, we didn't receive the scholarships or we didn't receive the benefits. Right. So well, let me say this too. You know, there are a lot of, a lot of saying is that you know, they didn't give us a chance. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know what? The thing that we stress to our children, mm -hmm. you're there to get an education. Mm -hmm. You you stress that across right. the board, regardless right. if they say, but I'm here being that teacher's faith. Mm -hmm. Demand, right. you know, what you need. Right. And so right. a lot of, you know, a lot of times the teacher's like, okay, you don't want it. Mm -hmm. Fine, I'm not going to force it on you. Mm -hmm. You know, you go there to learn. You go there to get right. all that all that's available you to yes. you. Mm -hmm. You be attentive. A lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, we mm -hmm. be we be the ones <laughs> in the back right, goofing right, off. Right, right. And not, not getting it. And the teachers would literally say, okay, fine. Right. Not forcing you, but mm -hmm. okay, fine. You don't want it, not going to make you get it. Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, truth be told, they didn't want you to get it in the first anyway, place. Anyway, that's right. So if you're not, uh, you don't have the interest mm -hmm. or the motivation to get what you need to get, that's right. then so be it. But we just thank God that we, we made it through those years. Yeah. And our grandchildren have options today. Yes. Because our children, you know, they went to HBCU and they graduated from HBCU mm -hmm. and, you know, like I did. And, and so they can afford charter schools right now. And we give them support in their efforts as best that we can. Let's bring me to my next scripture, which is Ezekiel 2214. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 2214 says, can thy heart endure or can thy hands be strong? In the days that I shall deal with thee, I, the Lord, have spoken it and will do it. So Miss Virginia's work was so important mm -hmm. because a lot of low-income families can't afford a better choice. Right. There is some problems and some obstacles that they have to overcome. And this is one of the reasons why we have so many, unfortunately, African-Americans and and children of color, color in, in juvenile detention and yeah. their juvenile, uh, juvenile, uh, the juvenile. juvenile delinquents and, mm -hmm. and troubled children getting into drugs and criminal activity and, and being incarcerated, and unfortunately, yeah. even being killed. Mm. But the interesting thing is that we're in Georgia, and, and I was very impressed and excited to read that Georgia House just passed Senate Bill 233 which gives $6,500 education voucher to low-income students who are attending low-performing public schools to attend private or charter schools. Wow. Now the bill moves to the full house for approval. That's so per family? That's, yeah, per wow. family. Per family. Education vouchers per family for low-income students. Wow. But now it's, it's already passed, but now it's got to go through the full house bill for approval. Hmm. So let's just hope that as many people learn of Virginia Walden Ford's story yes. and the effect that she has had on children's education, hmm. they are will be inspired to follow in her footsteps and, mm -hmm. and add to their already her already considered legacy. It's because education is key, my brothers and sisters. Yes. So we need more parents to, to be a school choice warriors for our children today.
Right. You know, and since the inception of this DC Opportunity Scholarship Program, thousands of students have received scholarships and the program boasts mm -hmm. of 91% wow. high school graduation mm -hmm. rate. Mm -hmm. That's outstanding. Yes. yes I mean, yes. that that rate continues to decline mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. across, you know, this country, but right. DC, right. mm -hmm. that's impressive. That's impressive. So um, if you haven't already, you know, looked her up, mm -hmm. even while we're doing this show, <laughs> You right. got to go and check her out. She is the author of the self-published memoir, mm -hmm. Voices, Choices, and Second Chances, mm -hmm. which is aimed at providing inspiration and direction for other parents right, right. who want to make a difference in their child's educational mm -hmm. choices. Mm -hmm. She also wrote a book entitled School Choice, okay. A Legacy to Keep. Mm -hmm. These books, and I'm going to flash up the screen uh, up, up on the, the pictures, but these books were published mm -hmm. in 2005 and 2019, mm -hmm. respectively. And uh, Virginia has won several awards mm -hmm. for her advocacy efforts. Now, the film that we've been talking about, it was uh, published, uh, well, put out in 2019, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's called Miss Virginia with uh, starring Uzo Adube, mm -hmm. uh, Amira Van. Uh, I don't know if you watched How to Get Away with Murder, but uh -huh. she was on there as the other attorney. Uh -huh. uh, Vanessa Williams, you remember from right. Soul Food and, right. and the first right. Black Miss America, uh -huh. as well as Ajene Ellis, right. who was right. uh, in King Richard. Uh -huh. and the Clark sister. She was the mother. <laughs> now, it's a good movie, y'all, and I encourage you to please go and watch it and give it your support. Yes, uh, yes. It's now streaming on Apple TV, Prime, mm -hmm. Tubi, all, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. uh, just Google it. But mm -hmm. this movie uh, has been released mm -hmm. by Moving Picture Institute, which specializes in in films based on stories that wrestle mm -hmm. the very ideal that America was founded on such as free expression, human rights, and resistance okay. to tyranny. Okay. I, I love this. Moving Picture Institute. Mm -hmm. I guess MPI, but mm -hmm. nevertheless, never heard of it, mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's impressive. So today, you know, Virginia is still active. She's still traveling countries, mm -hmm. uh, speaking to various parents and educational groups, encouraging moms and dads and grandparents and to discover the value of their voice mm -hmm. and the importance of their advocacy. Now, Virginia is the proud mother of, I said, three children. She mm -hmm. has grandchildren. Uh, and now she's with her, her twin sister. And i just seen a picture of them reminds mm -hmm. me of the Delancey sisters. Right. You remember yeah, them? Yeah. They live together. <laughs> they just right. grew old right. together. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but check it out. I, I was so impressed. I, I, I couldn't stop watching this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, normally I don't stay awake long enough to <laughs> complete one, but it was, it was a very good movie. Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance, check it out, check mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So we thank you all for joining in today and watching us, even though if you, if you didn't make a comment, we really appreciate your support and we th really thank you for tuning in. We always like to end with a closing scripture. And our scripture today comes from Joshua 10, 25. Joshua 10, 25. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said unto them, mm -hmm. fear, not, fear not, nor be dismayed. Mm -hmm. Be strong and of good courage. Mm -hmm. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. May God yes. bless you and keep you. Thank you again for tuning in. Thank you. Let's see, we got a comment just now. Is that... Oh, good evening, Brian. Thank you for joining. Thank you, thank for, you for, joining. for tuning in. God bless you, Brian. Thanks for tuning in. So thank you all. God bless you. Continue to enjoy your weekend. Love you. Thank you for the support.